so in uh, our last lecture we looked at uh, the way of using Taylor series approximations to discretize a uh, OD boundary value problem. So, we are able to convert a differential equation and the two boundary conditions into a set of algebraic equations. So, the problem got transformed from the original uh, infinite dimensional space to a problem on a finite dimensional spaces which was a set of linear or nonlinear algebraic equations which have to be solved. So, today let us look at some examples and let us see whether we can extend this concept to solving partial differential equations. So, uh, I wrote a generic boundary value problem discretization of so we we had this uh, original problem was or i would say y is equal to t of x this original problem was so you have this differential equation which is which holds over entire domain 0 to 1 this is the differential equation and then you have two boundary conditions one is that uh, so, you have a boundary condition 1 which is f1 and you have second boundary condition which is f2. We have two boundary conditions. Then what the way we proceeded next was we uh, discretized the domain. We discretize the domain, we mark these grid points such that using equidistant grid points we discretize the domain, we mark the grid points and then we had this notation that a dependent variable u, u i is equal to u of u i was the value that this dependent variable takes at z equal to z i that we denoted as u i. Note that this u here is the approximate solution. The real solution of this would be some u star u star z which would be a continuous function twice differentiable continuous function and we are not able to in general find out this solution in many situations where the operator is not linear we are not able to find this solution. So, we want to discretize and solve this problem analytic, uh, numerically and not analytically. So, we have created this grid points we have uh, marked the dependent variable value at grid points as u i and then we converted this boundary value problem the differential equation first we converted into uh, a set of algebraic equations. So, that was done by psi. So, we approximated the second derivative using Taylor series, we approximated the first derivative using Taylor series So, at all the internal grid points see here these are internal grid points z2, z3, z4 up to zn these are all internal grid points and then z1 and zn plus 1 are two boundary points okay z1 and zn plus 1 are two boundary points whereas so at all the internal grid points we enforce this equation okay please note that enforcing this equation does not mean uh, we are solving the exact problem we are solving an approximate problem and for the approximate solution we enforce this equal to 0 uh, there is an alternate way of uh, solving this problem is to create two hypothetical grid points one on the either side of the one on the either side of the end points and then discretize either way is fine if delta z is small. So, for the time being let us write uh, the equation in which we use one sided derivative approximations. So, So, 
So this, what I get here is the approximation. This approximation is nothing but uh, in, the, in the notation that we used earlier, it is nothing but y cap is equal to or y tilde is equal to t cap x tilde. So we started with some problem, we discretized and we got this discretized problem. So we started with a differential equation and two boundary conditions. We got set of algebraic equations. So the transform problem is completely different from the original problem. We hope that if you choose delta z small, then the Taylor series approximation is a good approximation and then this transformation will give you a solution which is close to the true solution. This will not, this way of transforming will not recover the original solution. It will only recover approximate solution. If you, if you, if you reduce delta z, then you will get better and better solution. But the price that you have to pay is that smaller the delta z, more number of equations. And then you will realize that these equations are coupled for ith equation requires u value of i plus 1 and i minus 1. So these equations are coupled. So if you let us say uh, take 100 internal points, delta z is very very small if I take 100 internal points, okay, then I will have 100 equations here and then two additional equations, 102 equations in 102 unknowns to be solved simultaneously. How do you solve this? You do the Raphson method. Okay. Or if these turn out to be linear equations, solve them using uh, you know Ax equal to b simple uh, Gaussian elimination. So you are transforming the problem and then solving it. Let us look at some examples today. So this is the background and we uh, catch up from here. So my first example is going to be a tubular reactor example. So my first example is going to be TRAM or tubular reactor with axial mixing. I am not going to derive the equations, I am going to just state the equations and then we will we'll see how to discretize. That is, that is the key thing here. So this is a simple reaction where A goes to B, okay, a very very simple reaction where A goes to B and the ODE BVP that is given to you is 1 by Peclet number into D2C by DZ square by DC by DZ minus this is Dankworth number into C square is equal to 0. So this should be obeyed between 0, Z, 1, okay. This is my differential equation and then I have two boundary conditions. I have two boundary conditions. So my boundary conditions here, so my first boundary condition at z is equal to 0, the derivative at z is equal to 0 is peclet number into c concentration at 0 minus 1 and my second boundary condition at, so this is my, this is my second boundary condition. I am just going to apply the method of uh, finite difference. This method that we are developing is called a finite difference method because we have de developed approximation of first and second order derivatives using Taylor series approximation, we have developed finite difference approximations, okay. So now my first task, what is, what is this operator psi here? This operator psi here is nothing but this differential equation, okay. So this second order derivative, I am going to replace by its approximation at, at any ith point, okay. Same thing is true about this derivative, I am going to replace approximation of this derivative at any ith point. And uh, so I am going to force the residual, the term that you get is called as residual, the residual is forced to 0 at all the internal grid points, at the two boundary points I am going to use the two boundary conditions. So this equ equation will now be replaced, this equation will now be replaced by 1 by Peclet number 
So, this will be C i plus 1 minus 2 C i plus C i minus 1. Now, what are these C i, C 1, C 2, C 3? C 1, C 2, C 3 are concentrations at the grid points. So, at this point, the concentration is 1, at this point is 2, C 3, at in general at this point is C k, C k plus 1 and so on, C n and C n plus 1. So, these are the dependent variable values at the grid points. Okay. At any ith location, at any ith location, I am discretizing the differential equation. So, the first derivative at ith location, uh, the first term that is second derivative is replaced by this, then minus c i plus 1 minus c i minus 1 divided by delta z. divided by 2 delta z, then what is the next term? d a c i square is equal to 0. This, this algebraic equation, this converted algebraic equation should hold at all the internal grid points. i is equal to 2, i is equal to 3, up to, up to i is equal to n. Okay? So, suppose, suppose I create, uh, let us say total, total grid points is 100, so 98 internal grid points, 2 boundary points, okay. Then I will get 98 equations like this, okay. Each equation is related to the neighboring values of, each equation is related to the neighboring values of C, okay. How do I discretize this? What is my first boundary condition? My first boundary condition is this will be C1, this will be C2 minus C1 by delta z is equal to Peclet number into C1 minus 1. So, this is one more equation. This is one more equation. I have just, I have just converted this into a difference equation, finite difference method. All right. I have converted the first boundary condition into a difference equation. Now I will convert the second boundary condition into a difference equation. So this will be C n plus one minus C n by delta z is equal to zero. How many equations I have now? Not 3. n plus 1 equations. How many unknowns I have? n plus 1 unknowns. If I solve this n plus 1 equations in n plus 1 unknowns, I will reconstruct a solution, an approximate solution of the boundary value problem. Okay. Difficult to solve analytically because of this C i square. And in general, I have taken very, very simple reaction. Okay. Uh, it, it could be a uh, 2a going to so 2a going to b or something like that. So, I have taken a very simple reaction. This could be a more complex uh, equation here. Okay. So, this n plus 1 equation in n plus 1 unknowns, I have to solve them simultaneously to now I want to point out something else here in addition to talking about discretization. I want to talk about some nice structure that appears. Okay. I am going to rearrange this, this set of equations and then write them in a specific form to give you insight about something that we will be talking about a little later. I am going to talk about a sparse system. Now, this particular equation is a very nice equation if you look at, if you look at it. There are n plus 1 variables, but only 3 variables appear in one equation only three variables appear. Okay. And when you have a large number of equations, you can actually make use of this fact that only three variables are appearing in each equation. These kind of equations will give rise to what are called as sparse systems. Okay. So, we will 
side by side as a side note I will also introduce this idea of a sparse system uh, and then later on we will be looking at special algorithms to deal with the sparse systems but right now it is just to give you an idea which is so uh, this first equation and this together I am going to rewrite in a matrix form which will give me uh, a sparse equation. Okay, so if I if I collect all the terms of uh, you know CI CI plus one and CI minus one together, then I can write this equation as alpha CI plus one plus uh, sorry minus beta. CI plus gamma CI minus 1 is equal to DA CI square ok where alpha is 1 minus 1 by delta G square Okay, I get equation like this n is equal to 2, 3 up to n. Okay, I have just grouped the terms together. I have just grouped the terms together. Okay, and then we have two more equations. We have two more equations coming from the boundary conditions. I am going to combine this and I am going to write this as a matrix equation. Okay. So if I if I include the two additional boundary conditions, okay. The what are the boundary conditions? One boundary condition will give me uh, right. One boundary condition will give me this equation. The other boundary condition will give me C n plus one is equal to minus C n is equal to zero. So these I have n n plus one equations in n plus one unknowns. And I am going to write them in a specific form. I am going to write them in this particular form. So, this particular equation will be set of n nonlinear equations in n unknowns. You might be wondering initially when I started talking about Newton Raphson method in multiple multivariable domain, where do you get this? Where do you get these equations? Classic example. Okay, one boundary value problem is giving me if I take 100 grid points, I will get 100 equations. Okay, so large number of equations. This equal to okay. See, this is like this is like matrix A, this is the matrix A operating on vector x which is f of x. You have to solve Ax equal to f of x. What is x here? x here is this vector c1, c2, cn plus 1. Okay, in abstract form, this equation, this equation, one matrix equation is nothing but matrix A operating on X gives me f of X. I have to solve this, I have to solve this problem or in other words, I have to solve AX minus FX equal to 0. AX minus FX equal to 0. You can solve this by Newton Raphson, you can solve this by simple iterative methods for example i could i could solve this by a simple method which is iterative method of this form a x k plus 1 is equal to f of x k okay i start with a guess x naught i start with a guess x naught okay so i start with a guess of concentration profile. What is X? Do not forget that. This is concentration profile. This is where 
your input as a chemical engineer will come into picture you have to give a sensible concentration profile if you suppose give here negative numbers it's not going to work so giving initial guess somebody had asked is it very important it's very very important how do you give initial guess okay so this is my concentration profile discretized concentration profile and i can give a guess if i put this guess x not here i can generate the new guess by solving a x equal to f x not then x1 i can substitute get x2 x2 i can substitute get x3 and so on and then i can see whether you know difference between this and this is going to zero or not by checking norm of this and see whether algorithm converges okay this is one way of solving right now that is not important what is important is that if i solve it like this this a i have to solve a x equal to b see because once i put x zero here okay this f of x is a known value okay i have to solve for x1 by solving the linear system a x1 is equal to okay then i have to solve another linear system a x2 is equal to f x1 and so on so i have to solve large number of linear systems linear linear algebraic equations now if i come back here if i come back here okay and then if i look at this matrix there's something special about this matrix this is a sum of three diagonal but the upper one is not strictly diagonal so this is a this is a matrix this is called as a tri diagonal matrix it's a banded matrix there are a lot of zeros how many elements this matrix has let's say if i take if i take 100 grid points how many elements this will have 100 cross 100 if i take 1000 grid points this will have 1000 cross 1000 and as we said more the number of grid points better is the approximation so i am forced to take smaller delta z if i take smaller delta z more number of equations matrix will have large number of elements okay if i develop some special methods that can deal with this banded matrices then this iterative calculations will become very easy okay so later on we are going to look at this methods for sparse systems this is this is a sparse so we will develop special methods for dealing with sparse linear systems okay Uh, which will reduce the computation because suppose you need 200 iterations 200 times if you have to invert a 1000 cross 1000 matrix not a nice thing to do okay instead if you develop a method which takes into account that there are lots of zeros okay you'll be able to do calculations very very fast that's where all these sparse matrix method will come into picture that is a side note we will need this very often and when we do the discretization using finite difference you will see that almost every time you hit into this sparse matrices sparse matrix okay some form of the other okay so let's move on to some other example but it is not necessary that uh, this finite difference method can be used to solve only boundary value problems it can be used to construct approximate solutions of partial differential equations as well okay i'll take the same trm problem and show that how you can convert this problem a partial differential equation right now i took the steady state problem i look at the problem which is time varying now in this case we got algebraic equations in the partial differential equation we might end up with something else okay so what is it that we'll end up with now my second example is a pd say same unsteady state uh, same tubular reactor with axial mixing same tram okay with uh, except that i am going to consider the unsteady state condition not the steady state condition okay so here so let's say this is a reaction in which 2a goes to b and then we have this dou c by dou t that is rate of change of concentration inside the reactor okay this is 1 by pecle number now unlike the previous case where i was looking at the steady state behavior i am looking at a transient behavior i am looking at a unsteady state behavior so dou c by dou t is not zero okay the concentration is a function of time and space not just space okay earlier we looked at the boundary value problem that 
came uh, that arises when you look at the steady state of behavior of this particular system. Okay, I still have the same two boundary conditions, but I will also have an initial condition now. Okay, there are two boundary conditions at z equal to zero, z equal to one, and is also initial condition in time. Okay, so so at t equal to zero, so at t equal to zero, I have some concentration profile. I have some initial concentration profile. Okay. Uh, inside this is given by Fz. Okay, this is my initial condition. There is some concentration profile inside, and then I have two boundary conditions. Oh, sorry, this is not one. This is T. So this boundary condition is at z is equal to one. This boundary condition is at z is equal to zero. So the solution now. Solution now is actually function of two independent variables. One is time, one is space, and other is time. At z equal to zero for all time, this boundary condition holds. At z is equal to one, at z is equal to one, at all time this boundary condition holds. Okay, I want to now discretize this particular problem using finite difference method. Okay, using finite difference method. What I'm going to do is. I am going to discretize in space and leave the time untouched for the time being. How will I solve the resulting problem? Something that we'll see later, but we'll convert into a standard form which can be solved using a standard tool. Okay, so in this case, this partial differential equation I am going to convert into a set of ordinary differential equation. Okay. I am going to discretize in space, not discretize in time. Okay. So what I'll get is a set of differential algebraic equations. What I'll get is a set of differential algebraic equations. So how will I discretize this? Okay. The same trick that we did earlier. In space, we are going to, you know, we are going to denote this grid points z1, z2. Z3 and then you have this C1. Okay, again I have discretized. I have discretized my domain, except now the dependent variable C, that is concentration, at the grid points is not only function of space, is also function of time. Okay, I have discretized only in space, so C1. So the discretization in space appears through these indices 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to n plus 1. Each one of them is a continuous, each one of them is a continuous function of time. So I am going to only discretize in space. Okay. So now what will be the residuals? I write, I enforce the partial differential equation only at the grid points. Actually the original partial differential equation holds at every point inside the domain at every time. We are not able to do that because we will get large number of equations. Okay, If you start uh, infinite number of equations, if you start forcing it at every point, we have to discretize and okay. So now if I discretize this, I will get d c i by d t. See the, the differential equation is forced at the ith grid point. Okay, what will what will be this? One by Peclé number into C i plus one t minus two C i function of time. Well, minus C i plus one t minus C i minus one t by 2 delta z. What I got here, what I got here is set of ordinary differential equations. I started with the partial differential equations. I started with one partial differential equations. One partial differential equation got converted into large number of ordinary differential equations. Okay. So in this case, the original operator t is partial differential equation. The transformed operator is 
set of algebraic and differential equations. Why I am saying algebraic? Because I have two more conditions here. Okay, one of them. Well, in this particular case, you will get two more differential equations. What are the two additional differential equations? The two additional differential equations that you get here are well. This is a derivative in space, so you will get algebraic equations here, not the differential equations. So what will be here? C two t minus C one t by delta z. I am taking forward difference approximation here, and is equal to Peclet number into C one t minus one. So this is one algebraic equation. Okay, what is the second algebraic equation? So what I get here is a differential algebraic system. Okay, I got differential equations in time, and I got two algebraic equations. Actually, in this is a simple problem. In this particular problem, I can eliminate two variables, and I can convert this problem into n minus one. ordinary differential equations i can treat it like that or alternatively i can treat those ordinary differential equations and these two algebraic equations together into a single dae differential algebraic system at towards the end of the course we'll be looking at how to solve differential algebraic systems so there are two ways to go from here one is to use these two constraint eliminate c1 and eliminate cn plus 1 you get equations only in terms of Only in terms of C two to C n, n minus one differential equations in n minus one unknowns, and then, well, you cannot stop here. You also have to discretize initial condition. This is a differential equation. It will need initial condition. So you cannot just stop at here discretizing the boundary conditions. What about the initial condition? What will be the initial condition? so initial condition will be c1 t c1 0 is equal to f z1 c2 0 is equal to f z2 and c n plus 1 0 is equal to f so these are the initial conditions these two algebraic constraints coming out of the boundary conditions and then n minus 1 ordinary differential equations have to be solved simultaneously okay have to be solved simultaneously so we have transformed the problem which was a partial differential equation which is difficult to solve analytically because you have you have ca square term appearing okay analytical solution could be difficult in this particular case in general if you have a more complex reaction rate equation it will be very difficult to solve this problem analytically you have to solve it numerically okay so you have to convert this problem into set of ordinary differential equation initial value problem okay or differential algebraic equation with initial value specified okay so these equations have to be solved simultaneously the transform problem is different from the original problem so remember this let's look at some other partial differential equations okay is the idea clear what is happening here here we transform a partial differential equation into a set of ordinary differential equations earlier a boundary value problem was transformed into set of algebraic equations which were non linear which had to be solved simultaneously remember this set of ordinary differential equations is not a linear ordinary differential equations this has to be solved numerically using some method like euler method runge runge kutta method or whatever we will be developing these methods later on right now i am just worried about problem transformation okay i am only worried about problem transformation yeah no i have n plus 1 variables and i have n plus 1 equations out of this n minus 1 equations are differential two are algebraic okay so i can eliminate two variables from this ordinary differential equations using the two algebraic constraints and convert into n minus 1 ode initial value problem that's possible 
in this particular case it is possible if your boundary conditions had some non linearity it's not possible to convert into uh, very easily into ordinary differential equation then it will be a dae system it has to be solved as a dae system okay uh, my third example is going to be a partial differential equation in two dimensions okay so uh, in two spatial dimensions so this is a model of a furnace okay uh, temperature distribution in the furnace uh, the three walls of the furnace are insulated and at a constant temperature idealization okay and then there is a you know convective heat transfer from one of the faces i mean if you ask me uh, how do i model this particular room temperature distribution in this room i would use equation something like this um, well why why is this like a furnace equation well you can see that this face is not insulated okay we could say that from this face there is convective heat transfer to outside okay these three walls let's assume as an idealization are insulated perfectly at the constant temperature where is the heat being generated well each one of you is like a bulb of 40 watts so there are 40 students into 40 watts so there is so much heat being generated inside this room okay so the temperature inside this room is function of two variables x and y okay the way the heat is distributed the heat sources are distributed all of you are sitting along different places okay this is like a so what is this model so this is the famous laplace equation okay let's initially consider the steady state problem all of you are perfectly generating the same amount of heat okay at all time there is perfect steady state okay now there will be four boundary conditions here at four different boundaries right so we said that the three boundary conditions are uh, so this equation should hold between 0 x 1 i have normalized the lens okay between 0 and 1 so this partial differential equation should hold at every point at every point inside this room okay and then i have four conditions my four conditions are x is equal to 0 my t is equal to t star insulated boundary okay then x is equal to 1 t is equal to t star okay when i say t here which means t along the boundary okay i'm not i'm taking shortcuts and not writing the full uh, then at y equal to 0 i have t is equal to uh, so uh, i should write t x 0 is equal to t star so accordingly i should write even these equations okay t at all x so three three boundaries have a constant temperature and the fourth boundary so i have convective heat transfer at the fourth boundary at y equal to 1 i have k okay so i have four boundary conditions here i have four boundary conditions here okay now how am i going to discretize this i'm going to use taylor series approximation in one dimension at a time okay in one dimension at a time so i'm going to i'm going to discretize this domain okay by constructing grid points now my domain is something like this okay i'm going to construct grid points here so this is my 1 2 3 4 uh, and so on this is my uh, okay so my finally i am going to get nx plus 1 grid points along x direction and let's say ny plus 1 grid points along y direction 1 to ny plus 1 1 to nx plus 1 so uh, so if you draw these lines here parallel to the 
so in general in general i am concerned about forcing the differential equation at some i zth point okay i am constructing a grid here i am discretizing see earlier we had only one special dimension we discretize in only one special dimension now i am going to discretize in two special dimensions x and y okay and then these partial derivatives are going to be approximated in two special dimensions so my partial differential equation where should this where should this partial differential equation hold everywhere actually it should hold at all the points okay all the points even for one dimension we created 100 grid points suppose you create 100 like this and 100 like this how many internal grid points will be there 100 cross 100 okay you have 100 cross 100 internal grid points and you want to force the partial differential equation at every grid point at every grid point right okay so in general at ith point i can write this equation as well we are going to use this notation t i z is equal to t x i y z so temperature this is to simplify the uh, discretization process i am going to use t i j is temperature at x i y j ok so uh, this is ith vertical line and this is zth parallel line ok at this point so i am going to write this equation and so what will be what will be the uh, the first one will be t i plus 1 j minus 2 t i j plus t i minus 1 j by delta x square plus t i j plus 1 See, I am taking partial derivatives in x direction, partial derivative in y direction. 2 t i j plus 2 Okay. How many such equations I will get? i going from 2 3 2 nx j going from 2 3 2 and y how many algebraic equations i get from a one partial differential equation i will get nx minus 1 into ny minus 1 right okay where are the additional equations coming from boundary conditions so i should discretize the boundary conditions and then take all these equations together okay how many equations and how many unknowns nx plus 1 cross nx plus 1 okay 100 cross 100 if you take 100 grid points very modest requirement just imagine this room 100 grid points not not too many if you want a better solution probably you should go 1000 cross 1000 but the number of variables will be very very large okay yeah i'm not i'm not getting into the physics of the problem given this problem we want to solve it let's so now we will require additional equations right at the boundaries so what are the boundary equations no no let's not let's not get into the physics you you do that in other course transport course you ask that question i am just worried right now about problem discretization okay so now see this this will give additional equations so i will get uh, uh, 
t star at x is equal to 0, x is equal to 0, I will get all these points, right, along y. So, I will get uh, t uh, 1 j is equal to t star j going from 1 to n y plus 1 then the second boundary condition will be t n x plus 1 j is equal to t star j going from 1 to n y plus 1 ok. Then you discretize the third boundary condition ok and then this fourth boundary condition you discretize using forward difference ok oh sorry backward difference you discretize this using backward difference ok at all the grid points at all the grid points along x ok yeah mixed derivative you do not get second order derivative at the boundary huh. so why do not we develop an approximation a difference equation can we develop a difference equation so you take first derivative in x then you take derivative in y so you will get large number of equations you will get large number of equations which are coupled in general and they have to be this will also give rise to a sparse system you can see that any equation here how many equation how many variables appear only neighboring four variables appear if you take t i j i j th point there are only five variables appearing how many variables we have we have large number of variables n x plus 1 cross n y plus 1 but in one equation there are only five variables you can expect that if you try to solve this numerically you will get sparse system okay you will get a sparse system and then of course we will be looking at solving sparse linear systems or sparse nonlinear systems separately but the is the idea clear how do you do discretization okay so in this case the original problem is a partial differential equation discretized problem is a set of nonlinear or linear algebraic equations which have to be solved simultaneously okay which have to be solved simultaneously so the transform problem is different the solution that you get from the transform problem is an approximate solution ok not not the original solution. So, in the next class we will see one more example one more way of discretizing this and then we will start with some other methods of discretizing.